The Red Hat Plus Plus Shield is now finalized and a limited number of boards is available in the Tindy store. So it's time for a closer look at the board, the schematics and how to install it. Welcome to the IoTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. If you are not familiar with the Red Hat Plus Plus Shield concept, here is what the Shield is used for. It is stacked on top of an Arduino based DCC Plus Plus X command station and turns it into a Loconet central unit, with the possibility to connect typical Loconet devices like throttles or block detector modules and integrate it with JMRI or other control software. Watch the videos in the Red Hat playlist on this channel for more information about the concept and how I came up with the now finalized board and software design. Ok, now for some details about the hardware. The top side of the board looks rather empty, with only a few components on it. And in fact it was one of my design goals to only place those elements on the top side that the user needs to have access to. Let's quickly identify them. The first one is the DC power plug. It can be used to power the entire board stack, particularly if you are running small scale trains and your total track current is around 2 amps or less. The DC plug should be connected to a 12 to 16 volt power supply and it is perfectly ok to use it to switch the command station on and off. Connect power and it will start up, unplug it and it will store all runtime data and shut down after 30 seconds. Next to it is the Loconet B connector, which can be used to connect additional boosters. It has the usual Loconet signal, but the Railsync pins are only powered if track power is on. Without track power they are off and any attached booster will shut track power as well. A blue LED next to the socket indicates the status of the track power. It is of course also possible to connect a throttle to this outlet, but be aware that it will shut down if track power is removed. If you want the throttle to keep operating you have to install a battery. This is different for the two other Loconet outlets. Those are Loconet T outlets, meaning they provide DC power on the Railsync wires which is on as long as the shield is powered. So you can shut down track power but the connected throttles remain active even if no battery is installed. The supply power status is indicated by the yellow LED between the two sockets. Note that there is a power on delay of about 5 seconds after connecting the DC plug until the throttle network is powered. The green terminal connector is used to connect to the DCC track output of the Arduino motor shield. Make sure to connect it to the main track output, not to the programming track output. If you are using a standard motor shield, the track output will be on the same side of the stack, so connection is very easy. The DCC signal is needed by the Red Hat Plus Plus shield to supply the racing wires of the Loconet B outlet and therefore to drive additional boosters. The large RGB LED is the first LED of the LED chain, which can be connected using the 3 wire pigtail connector. The meaning and colors of this LED is fully programmable. In the default setup it is configured as power LED, if it is red track power is off, yellow means track power is idle and green means the DCC track is powered. That's the default setting, but if you prefer you can reconfigure it to show a turnout position, a track occupancy status, the aspect of a signal and a few other things. The two jumpers right next to it let you select the output pins for the DC++ export. If you are using an Arduino Uno as command station, place the jumpers to the right side as shown in the picture and the communication is routed to the IO pins 0 and 1 of the Arduino board. If you are using an Arduino Mega instead, you can place the jumpers to the left and make a wire connection from the two soldering pads to the receive and transmit pins of your board. 
Note that the communication pins are designed for 5 volt levels. If your board is using 3.3 volt logic levels, you can adjust the Red Hat Plus Plus shield by simply adding a jumper on the pins labeled 3V3. The remaining 8 pin connector is for connecting the IoTT stick, which acts as the brain of the LocoNet command station and provides wireless connection as well as wire throttle, MQTT, and LocoNet over TCP servers. On the Grove port side, it is connected using a 50mm Grove cable to the Grove outlet on the back side of the board. This is the LocoNet connection for the IoTT stick. Finally, the Arduino pin headers. I am still debating about whether to use them or not. For the moment, I make the board available in two versions, one with traditional Arduino pin headers and the other version with just regular pin headers without sockets on the top side of the board. Personally, I prefer the standard headers as they make the board look less crowded. But if you want to experiment and maybe use some of the unused pins to connect turnouts or block detectors, as it is possible with the DCC++ X software, I see an advantage in using the socket headers as they allow for simple connections using jumper wires. Let me know in the comments section of this video which version you prefer. Now let's turn the board around, look at some of the installed components and identify them in the schematics, which by the way is published on my GitHub page linked below, along with all the other design information needed in case you want to build the Red Hat++ shield for yourself. The first thing that stands out is that green PCB in the middle. This is actually the DC-DC converter that generates the 5 volt voltage for the entire Arduino stack as well as for the LED chain. Here is how it looks on the schematics. The power is coming in from the DC plug, runs through a FET to protect against wrong polarity and is then connected to the input soldering pads of the DC-DC converter. On the other end of the converter is the 5 volt main bus that supplies the onboard logic and also the 5 volt pin of the Arduino. The DC-DC converter has an adjustable voltage output and I normally set it to about 5.1 volts, so just slightly higher than the 5 volts generated by the Arduino onboard LDO. This way the LDO is bypassed and therefore protected from heating up and it is possible to use a V-in voltage of up to about 16 volts, which then also can power the motor shield for low current applications. You may wonder why I'm using a daughter board instead of just soldering all the components of the DC-DC converter to the main board. Well, I in fact do have a board layout for that, but due to the actual chip shortage it seems impossible to source the converter chip for a reasonable price. Last time I checked the cheapest offer for just the chip itself was around $2. The daughter PCB on the other hand runs around 50 cents a piece when buying 100 or more at the time. So for the moment this is the cheaper option. In the long run I probably will replace it by my own design. The next well visible component on the board is the 15 volt LDO used to regulate the rail sync voltage on the LocoNet sockets. Here is how it looks like on the schematics. V in as well as the DCC signals from the motor shield output run through diodes and are combined into VDCC+. This voltage depends on the DC power supply voltage and on the motor shield power supply voltage if an external power source is used for the motor shield. In any case, VDCC plus is the higher one of the incoming voltages. It is then run through the 15 volt LDO, which basically limits the rail sync voltage for throttles and boosters to 15 volts. If VDCC plus is lower than that, it just runs through without further regulation. The resulting VCC15 is then used to supply the 3 channel H bridge driver that supplies the LocoNet sockets. The reason for this complexity is that the H bridge allows to measure the current and shut down the LocoNet outlets in case of a problem. This is done with the onboard comparator and the Schmidt trigger inverter gate, which, as a welcome side effect, 
also generates the switch on time delay. The DCC information is taken from the incoming DCC signal, which is just limited to 5V maximum using the Cena diodes, and then used to drive the H-bridge channels for the Loconet B connector. The final major building block of the PCB is the Loconet interface. It uses the same components as the Loconet interface breakout board explained in video number 43, so the typical comparator op amp and the usual voltage dividers for the Loconet signal. It also has a 15 mA current source to terminate Loconet. The Loconet signals are then routed to the IOTT stick using the standard growth port connector. And that pretty much is it for the hardware. Oh wait, maybe one more little detail here. The power supply for the two Loconet outlet LEDs. They are supplied using 20 mA current sources, which makes the brightness of the LED independent of the supply voltage. It's slightly more complex than a fixed series resistor, but I really like the idea of constant brightness LEDs. Maybe you want to consider something similar for your next design. Ok, after this quick look at the circuits, let's assemble a Loconet command station. It's actually quite simple. All you need is an Arduino Uno, a motor shield and the Red Hat++ shield with an IoT stick. Put the Arduino on the bottom, then stack the motor shield on top of it. Follow the instructions on the DCC++ X web page, which has information on specific motor shields and support for loading the command station software into the Arduino board. The DCC X project also maintains a Discord server, where many people are more than willing to answer questions and provide support if you run into problems. I recommend that you get the DCC X command station up and running and make sure you can run trains and program decoders before adding the Loconet part to it. It just helps with debugging in case of a problem if you know that the basic command station is working properly. Once your command station is running, put the Red Hat++ shield on the top of the stack. Make a DCC connection from the motor shield track output to the Red Hat++ shield, insert the IOTT stick and connect the short growth port cable. There is one thing you really need to be careful about in this step. Make sure that no part of the motor shield is making connection with any conductive part of the Red Hat++ shield. In particular, Verify that the pin headers found on several motor shield boards do not make contact with components of the DC-DC converter. I moved the DC-DC converter out of the way as much as possible, but then I bought another motor shield board and for sure the location of the pin headers was different and some of them came very close to the DC-DC converter. If there is contact, it might cause a short circuit causing some smoke to come out somewhere. And yes, I'm talking because of some experience. In my case, it was the Arduino onboard LDO that fried in the process. The board is still working, so it's not the end of the world, but better safe than sorry. Just to be sure there cannot be a short circuit, I cut the pins near the DC-DC converter about 3 mm and verified that there is a sufficient air gap between the pins and the conductive parts of the DC-DC converter. That's it for the assembly process. Just add power to it and watch how the IoTT stick starts up. You now can use your smartphone to connect the stick to Wi-Fi and then load the main configuration page by typing the displayed IP address into a browser. If you have questions during this step, watch video number 42 or check the IOTT webpage for more information. The link is in the description below. Also, if you are using an older IOTT stick, make sure you update the stick software to version 1.5.13 or newer. As always, you can get the latest installation file from the GitHub page. In the node configuration page, you select Loconet interface as command source 
and Red Hat++ as your Hat module. In the Communication Servers section, you can activate the servers you would like to use. When everything is to your liking, click on Save and Restart to make the settings permanent. The IoTT stick will then reboot and your command station is ready. You can now connect a throttle to a Loconet T connector and then select locomotive or operate switches just like on any other Loconet command station. Using the browser you can also configure a lot of other options for the command station and the available servers. I will cover this in detail in one of the next videos, so stay tuned and subscribe to the IoTT channel so you will be in the loop when more information becomes available. Once you are done playing with the trains, you simply pull the plug. The Red Hat++ shield will then store all the runtime information like position of turnouts, the addresses of the locomotives that are assigned to a throttle, etc on its internal flash drive and safely shut down after about 30 seconds. When power comes back on, it will reload the data and you should be able to continue the session at the very same point you left it off. Starting just a day or two ago, I made a small quantity of Red Hat++ shields available in the Tindy store for early adopters. I pretty much sell them at cost for now with the expectation that users provide some feedback that helps to further improve the software and that they also report any problems with the hardware or installation. So if you are interested, check out the listings in the Tindy store. And that's it for this video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and you have now a better idea how the Red Hat++ Shield works and how it can make your DCC++ X command station compatible with your Loconet equipment. If so, please click the like button below to let me know. It is free of cost for you, but helps a great deal with promoting this video and the IoTT channel in general, because YouTube likes the likes. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.